How's everybody doing? Happy Thursday. We're getting close to the weekend. <laughs> no, I need it. Let me bring this up. My name is Phil, and I'm an aviation mechanic. Sorry about that. Checking it out on my phone. We're looking good. Oh, man. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to do a short stream today. Let's see. Okay. I'm over there. Struggle streaming already, but we going to make it. We going to make it. Uh, so let's see. Good Hope everybody's having a great Thursday. It's a little warmer in the Midwest, so I'm excited. I'm going to go for a quick walk. So um, I've been on a ton of panels and a ton of uh, podcasts and got interviewed in a ton of locations. And <laughs> sometimes I um, we just get... Um, intertwined and caught up with all the um, nomenclature, the special words, the, the three-letter acronyms, especially uh, most people know that. I worked at DOD for 11 years, and you get just hung up with acronyms. So I just decided to do a series of cybersecurity where we just break down those terms and um, make them, I guess, <laughs> break down the terms and break down the meanings more. Um, so so I just decided, like I said, to just do something. Um, novice uh, security, most people be bored. Just just break it down to some, some of the simplest terms. What's up, Sparks? Glad you can join me. Thanks for checking out my videos, too. Um, if, you, if you got any additional questions, you can throw them in here. I think you would. We just use the emoticon, if I remember right. Shout out to the emoticons, but no, thanks for uh, checking out my videos. So, yeah, so we're just going to start um, just talking about normal things in cybersecurity and just breaking them down to, to the lowest level, right? So that's why I call this uh, novice security, right? What's up, Keep It Techie? <laughs> Shout out to you putting in work. Uh, everybody go check out Keep It Techie's course. It's excellent. I shared that. With my small 1300 uh subscribers i appreciate every one of them but uh keep taking got 10 times more than me but shout out to him so i always want to share stuff when i can but it's a great course I, i've looked at a few of those so um whew, this youtube life is busy so yeah let's just we're just gonna start like i said we're just gonna go over fishing uh super easy super basic term what it is and what it it's meant so we got a couple introduced introductory slides, and we're just gonna slide on into it. Y'all know how I do it. If y'all got any uh, cyber or IT questions, put them in the box. If you got any, any Linux questions, keep it techies in the house. Just add him; <laughs> he'll answer them for you. Shout out to that though. So, um, so it's just introduction to cybersecurity, just something even lower than introduction. So, what would that be? So, I just came up with the term novice intro, A B C level. Let, let's just break it down to, to the lowest level, right? And two is, um, shout out to Keep It Tech. I think I'm going to make this into a, a middle school uh, course. Uh, Keep It Tech got me thinking of courses now. So I might make this into a middle level school course. So I've been uh, practicing on my grandson. He don't like it. He want to play Fortnite. <laughs> He'd be like, granddaddy, uh, messing up my Fortnite time. <laughs> so so now let's just break it down. A couple, uh, not many, not many slideshows uh, for the people don't know, I'm a professor in real life. Uh, it's going on my 10th year. This is probably going to be my last year teaching for a while. I'm going to bring it all to YouTube. So let's go and get through it and just kind of knock it out. Like I said, this is my first one. So I was just thinking of like some uh, uh, an entry level, um, an entry level um, series. So. <laughs> Engineering cannabis can chime in. We, uh, I don't think we're gonna be doing no machine learning yet, but this is for entry level. But shout out to Engineering Cannabis. Uh, he's starting a channel with machine learning, artificial intelligence, some uh, other stuff. So he's de definitely in the house. So cyber security at a high level is a practice of defending computers, servers, mobile devices, electronic system, network, and data from malicious attacks. All right, phishing. Attack is a malicious attack, and that's what we're gonna um, get into. 
It also known as um here, let me I'm trying to figure out how to get my slides without me being in the well, it's okay. It's also known as information technology security. Electronic information security, the term applies to a variety of contexts from computers to mobile computing and can be divided into not a few common categories, but a lot of categories, right? So when you're talking about cybersecurity, you're talking about pretty much all the, all the domains in IT you're trying to secure. Shout out to Keep It Tech. You got the Linux, the Unix, uh, DBA work, admin work, um, all that kind of goes together. When you're talking about VMs, most of that's done on a Linux, right? You VMing it up, slicing it up. Uh, you are usually on a big Linux box and you can VM a Windows host, a Linux host, a satellite host, right? So all that parts um, is the domains in cybersecurity, right? So uh, the three main type of cyber crimes is cyber crime, cyber attack, and cyber terrorism, right? You get more cyber and terrorism, right? Because Ukraine and Russia is getting into it, right? So there's a different types of cyber attack, uh, cyber crime, cyber terrorism. They're hacktivists, and we'll get those in later in this series, right? These are just three high level uh, kind of attacks. Right? So cyber safety tips to protect against uh, cyber attacks: update your software. Always use antivirus. Uh, use strong password and these do, do not open up emails attachment from unknown senders. These could be infected with malware. Do not click on emails from unknown senders on unfamiliar websites. This is a common way for malware. And that's where phishing comes from, foreign file. Right, and everybody has phishing emails, right? And we're going to look at some of them. I'm trying to trick you into clicking some so I can drop some on, on your machine being a rat, malware, virus, worms. Right. And the last one, of course, avoid using unsecure Wi-Fi networks uh, could leave you vulnerable for man in the middle of chat. But so what are we talking about? This is phishing, right? There's the hacker. I'm trying to get your personal data be your social security number, your credit cards, hospitals. I mean, there's, there's so much data out. The new hack is people um, filling out a refi uh, in your name and taking all the equity out of your house, right? That's your personal data I'm stealing, right? So, but once again, it's done with a phishing attack, right? So I'm gonna send you something to get you to click on to steal your your, your data from you. Right? This is a phishing email that most people get in their email or, or text on their phone, right? Dear value customer of Trusted Bank, we received notice that you recently attempted to withdraw a filing amount for your account while in another county. If this information is not uh, correct, someone unknown may have accessed your account. As a safety measure, please visit the website link below, right? So when you click on that website, right, I'm going to put malware, virus, or something. So, so that's the phishing part. Once you have done this, our fire department will resolve the discrepancy and we'll be happy you have chosen to do business with us, right? So that phishing email is that fish right there. He's dropping to get your person data is this email. If you work in a company or just your private, I mean, they just come out so much. Can you break down what a DR DDoS is? Yeah, let me do that at the end, Caleb. Um, so this is the phishing. People get a ton of these emails. One of the things you can do is trying to hover over the links or over the attachment and see where it's actually coming from. See, that's showing you the real link that's coming from. And it's not coming from Chase, right? It's coming from some personal account. Is that chick? Is that cl click jacking the form? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's definitely a form, JM of that it's a higher form a little more complex but yeah so yeah if you hover it over it so usually before i click over anything i hover over the email and to be honest i usually just log on to their website without clicking on the email right or call up my bank to kind of figure out what's going on for a phishing perspective so so that hook and that is this so if you click on anything gotcha <laughs> my david chappelle gotcha <laughs> Right, so then I could put a rat, Trojan, worm, take over your machine, uh, steal all the contacts in, in your phone. All right, but the basic thing of phishing is 
I send you something to try to get you to click on it, right? That that's it out of it. And it's so if you hover it on a lot of times, you can see, you know, these are coming from not Chase Bank or different websites or something uh misspelled from Chase. Once again, Exchange Active Sync service was disabled for this, but when you look at the email, it doesn't look like a company's um active sync, you know, account when you look at it, when you hover over it. Right, so that's the link, but when you hover it over, it's actually going to someplace else. So, so let's see. Sparks in the house. Keep the tech in the house. Engineering cannabis. I'm like <laughs> some paper. Shout out to can you break down DR D dialysis? Yeah, I could do that at the end. Um a quick question: what kind of hack do you call this when you use a phone in prison to scam? A company over fraud. I think that's phishing with the V because of voice, but that company's <laughs> wow, 400 k That's a lot of money, engineering cannabis. Hey, but when you're in jail, what else you got to do all the day? <laughs> engineering cannabis. It's usually phishing with a, a V for a phone, and I'll probably do a separate video over that. But I would call that a dumbass from the company. <laughs> engineering. It's the up yet perform. Salute to uh most. So once again, if you hovered over it, that's one way to see actually. So if that beginning part of that HTTPS is not the company's name or a dot and the company's name, I I'm definitely not clicking on it, right? So that's one of the basic ways to check for phishing. Hover over the count. And if, if you don't see the company's domain name in that email address, I, I definitely wouldn't click on it, right? So phishing is a type of social engineering where an attacker can send a fraudulent spoof fake or otherwise deceptive message designed to trick the per person into revealing sensitive information to the attacker or to deploy malicious software on the victim's uh infrastructure like ransomware once again the fish is the email and like they said i'm trying to spoof fake get or you click on it and i take over your laptop your pc or your phone right phishing attacks has become increasingly sophisticated often transparent mirror to sites being targeted and allow attack to deserve everything while the victim is navigating the site transverse any additional security boundaries with the uh, victim phishing is by uh, far the most common attack performed by cyber criminals with the fbi internet compliant complacent and recording over twice as many incidents of phishing than any other type of computer crime right that was from 2022 the fbi you know um keeps track of that because uh, most states now, when you get hacked, especially from a company perspective, you got to let the uh, local uh, FBI agency known and the uh, local um, state uh, general attorneys wants to know now, which is, I guess that's that's normal. It's, it's such a big bite, you know, and it's happened so, so frequently. <laughs> cool, I'll do that. Got Hush Puppy, the best fishing cyber crime of 2021. I gotta check that one out. <laughs> like you said, they they putting in work out here, man. But 400,000, oh my god, you would think with all the training and classes we have to take, we would get better. Don't those prisons have their own? Don't those prisons have their own towers to grab info into their proximity college scenery? Some towers is, and some of them they're getting better because they're getting um uh those burner phones uh then with some of those burner phones they're actually have um and i need to, i should have brought there they were they were doing vpns on those cell phones to get past the tower <laughs> okay look uh, those guys are smart they were using uh, uh the one i saw and i need to find it you could google it they were actually using vpns on burner phones <laughs> to get around the uh the sim um into their proximity but a lot of times too is jails and prisons aren't that sophisticated so for them a cell call or sim call looks like a regular call coming from those and they don't they don't do the stingrays from the towers that's actually more of an fbi and really it's pretty expensive so i need to do a little investigation call i don't think prisons do stingrays um, you would think they would to catch people, but stingrays is when they're trying to catch you on the outside. I don't think they use those in the prisons because uh, most prisons and uh, jails think they're secure enough. So I don't think they uh, apply those type of technologies. But I need to double check on that, Kyle. I did. 
He did one million. I probably do this at you. I will. I probably do that on my next one. That's crazy. That is crazy. Uh, so spear fishing is a form of fishing. It's a specifically target for certain people. Spear fishing is a social engineering which is perpetrated disguised as a trusted individual. Tricks is targeting and clicking a link, spoofed email, uh, text messages. As a result, the target un unwittingly reveals information, styles a malicious malware on the network, or executes the first stage of advanced APT, which is persistent threat, which is basically a very good hacker, to name a few possibilities. While similar to phishing, whaling attacks and spear phishing is launched in a new way, unique way, and it targets different from other social media accounts. As a result, the attack deserves special attention. So spear phishing, um, like I know there's special Linux guys or Oracle guys. So when I send my email, I'm specifically targeting, let's talk about IT, let's talk about technology or just our machine or um, engineering kids. Let's talk about machine learning. It's spear phishing because I'm targeting a certain group of people because I'm a, a crafty email to force for them to um, click on it. So once again, I'm spear fishing is different. Like, so I always laugh. I go on LinkedIn. You go on these groups. I could target everybody in a certain group, like Java programmers. I can, I can uh, put a special um, phishing email just targeted to the Java guys, right? And I would probably have a high probability of clicking on it because I know they like Java. I know they're interested in Java. I know they're trying to probably find Java jobs, right? So. With spear fishing, I'm just more being my fault, just more intricate at what I'm um, sending out so I can get those guys to click on the email. The two is if you look on somebody's Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, you can really craft an email specifically for a group of people because you know they like this certain thing and they're super interested in certain things, right? So that's the difference with the spear fishing, right? Once again, it's a fish, just uh, more targeted, right? Then the next one on that is the big dogs, whaling. Whaling is used a deceptive email. Once again, I'm trying to get them to click on it, right? They're targeting it. Whaling used deceptive email messages targeting high-level decision makers within an organization such as the CEO, CFO, other executives, such as individuals that have access to highly valuable information including trade secrets, password, and administrative companies. The attacker sends the email on the issues of a critical business important, masquerading as an individual organization with legitimate authority. For example, an attacker may send an email to the CEO requesting payment, pretending to be a client of the company. Well, an attack I always uh, personally address targeting individuals, often use their title, uh, position, and phone number, which are obtained using companies, website, social media, and directories, right? So can I trick the big guy into um, giving me their information? There was one done in here. I'm in Indiana where um, somebody faked like what they were the CEO. The secretary sent them everybody's in payrolls information, right? And so the hacker had everybody's uh, SSN and stuff now from their personal information because it was a targeted attack, right? For well and looking for the big machine. Okay. Uh, what are you doing with machine learning? He's the machine learning expert in the in the manosphere. So um, here's what he does for a living. But I'll let him uh, extrapolate that out for you, uh, Caleb. Uh, I mean, engineering canvas probably been on about five or six panels together so shout out to him um so whaling is so um once again you got mass scale fishing where you're just sending out random fishing uh emails trying to see who you would catch spear fishing little more tailored victim or, or groups of it or whaling is specialized you're going for the c-suite right so usually going for like five or six people at a company trying trying to uh, get them to click on it so you can take over, right? Because, you know, if you're the CEO, you can request payment. You can send money. If you're the CFO, CEO, all of those guys usually have budgets and uh, buying authority, right? But once again, just the big thing is the phishing part, sending out an email, sending out a text, trying to trick people 
in the clicking on it, right? So you can take it over. Now, the cool thing is, uh, if you go to um, Microsoft Office 365, that's what everybody uses for email. They have a lot of uh, anti-phishing protection in there. Like we talked about, phishing is an email attack that tries to steal information and appears to be legitimate and a trusted source. We talked about spear phishing, uh, fused to focus and customized content. We talked about whaling, directed at an executive or high level value target with the organization for a maximum EF, uh, effect. Business email compromise used to for trusted senders, such as financial officers, customers, trick recipients into approving payment, transferring funds, revealing customer data. Once again, uh, business email compromise. Same thing as phishing, just a little different type of it. Then ransomware, that encrypts your data. Once you click on that fish, one of the things you can get ransomware. And we're going to talk about that uh, later on in this series. So but the big deal is when you do my, Microsoft Office 365, they have anti-phishing stuff to block a lot of this. That's why you want to use their service. And um, Facebook, all that stuff, those phishing um, emails come as spam. They mark those as spam, so they keep track of billions and trillions of emails that came through that people marked as spam so it won't get sent out. So if that same uh, fish gets sent into your organization to different people, once you mark it as spam, especially in 365, uh, they have machine learning like engineering cannabis. Said. They look at the to, the from, how the email is crafted, and anything similar to that coming into the organization will get blocked and put in your spam filter. All right, so... Then things you get from phishing, and we're just going to touch on this high level. Malware, virus, Trojan, spyware, ransomware, adware. We're going to have a series talking about different level of malware, virus, and worms, and uh, where all of these fall into. Uh, and also part of the anti-phishing for Office 365 is called uh, EOP, part of Microsoft Defender. Uh, you get spoof intelligence, anti-phishing policies. Allow or block spoof, allow or block spoof senders in the tenor or allow or block list. Implicit email authentication. There's ways to when you send an email to get authenticated by Office 365. But I just want to mention these at the hard level because there's billions of phishing emails going around, and I think uh, people do an excellent job, and companies do an excellent job of it. So. This is just, and I'm not gonna play it. Phishing, once again, is a scam to gain personal information. So, so let's see what the chat says. I'll drop down the link if y'all wanna come up. Like I said, I'm just wanna do something super uh, easy, basic. Like I said, I'm starting like a super um, easy. Did I go on there? There's a link if you want to come up, but yeah, just some I will call it the the novice series. Uh, <laughs> I do a lot with machine learning, with predictive analysis, object detectives, NLB for sure, reinforcement learning, deep learning, different sector, agricultural, health, cannabis, uh, different things uh, he uses that for. Oh, true. There are some tools like Web Extractor to emails from Target website. No, you're correct. There's a lot of tools. I'm just lazy, Jay. I might let uh, Azure handle all of that with, with all those services I buy, but you're 100% correct. Uh, it's just so many because uh, the organization I, I work at as a consultant is a large state agency. They show me they get a billion emails a day of phishing where they just show you where it gets quarantined. Oh, shut off for Neo4j. I used that in Java for a couple of smaller projects, not for uh, machine learning. I was using it for um, just going through an organization chart and some other org star. But shout out to Neo4j. I oh, mean, I used that 10 years ago. That's how old I am. It's probably a lot better when I did it. It probably was a lot. It's probably a lot better. Uh, once again, I'm going to start doing some Java stuff on my channel. So uh, definitely probably do that. Is Python, C++, Green Architecture, for the architecture being anything? Are you open? Open the NI? Are you open the NI? 
So um, once again, I just dropped the link. If you want to come up, come up. Like I said, I'm just going to do this novice series. I get a lot of people. I think <laughs> me and engineering and cannabis was chopping it up and somebody said we, we sounded like Chinese. So I'm just going to want to do some, like I said, some super high level stuff, um, easy stuff. I think I'm going to make a middle school uh, course. I keep saying for the summer, the summer's here. So if I'm going to do something, I'm going to need to do it. But once again, just a basic course. Um, like I said, we we chop it up so much, I just forget, you know, there's a base thing you need to learn. I really understand cybersecurity and stack it on, on other things. So, it, um, so you can learn the terminology, right, with anything. Uh, we do that. We pay an outsourced vendor to do that jam. We have a part of our um, testing we do from cybersecurity that we have to run a test every 18 months. Uh, we do a phishing uh, exercise. Um, so we send out fake email. And the cool thing, Jam, we do it after a week after we train them until you tell them not to click on stuff. Then we send them a target coupon that's fake and they click on it, Jam. I promise you, they click on it. <laughs> so, so uh, um, how common is email hacking? Um, well, if you look, uh, it's not common, but from a nation state, if you look at the um, Solar Winds, part of the Solar Wind hack is they were they hacked uh, Azure's um, back office. And they actually got the MFA link um, I, from a regular hacker, not very common from a nation state. They be going through them emails. Um, like I said, if you look at the uh, Solar Winds hack, they got the MFK, MFA key off of Azure. And they were going through the Fed's email. They were going through the government email. Um, so I think na nation states really shoot for that. Um, hacking email, I don't think hitting you with the uh phishing so you can click on something that's huge, <laughs> but um, actually hacking and getting your email very rare. But once again, the solar winds they got all in the back of Azure and got all in back of companies, they got their active directory, and part of their active directory is called the SML Golden Attack. Um, you can get somebody MFA token, so when you get their token, you're them, so they um, they got that. So. Oh, that's cool. Me too. I had a flip phone. I'm 53. I think I'm still a little older than you, Cal. <laughs> I'm 53. So I program in Java for probably 10 years. Now I do it just off and on. What's up, Ty? Uh, I saw you on my man, Simply Cyber. I like that guy. I might check check out his GRC class to see if I can recommend it. Since I, I really think GRC is a hidden gem. So I probably... Are you gonna take that GRC course from Simply Cyber Tower? Are you just checking in? you just checking him out? I love his first take first. I probably used to hack email by hacking a mobile phone and getting control access. Uh that's true. That's true. Um when you hack a phone and you and you using a person's email, I don't really consider that hacking the email, right? Because you got the uh credentials from the user's phone, but so that's probably my only difference with that, Jam. Oh, I would have to actually look that up, Cal. <laughs> I know we talk about jacking in my intro to introduction to cyber. I got a what? Hush Puppy did hack company email redirect clients to deliver money to. Oh yeah, Hush Puppy did hack the company's email. Yeah, because um, I just did a video where uh, Illinois people stealing people's uh, unemployment check. They're hacking each individual into the unemployment office, like. Like what you talking about, their engineering cannabis, and they're changing their uh, their bank account to uh, the hacker's bank account. Okay, cyber ops, Cisco's way to go, man. Uh, if you go to that's um, that's that's cool. I heard Dewan talk about it, and uh, do you follow um, Network Bruh? Time. I'm always on network, bro. He need the Cisco Labs. Uh, he was doing them four days a week, but I think he's taking the next level Cisco class. So if you're not familiar, check out Network uh, B R U H. He does a lot of uh, that. So let's see. Let's do the D R.
Once again, if you want to come up, I'm come up. I'm just looking up a few things while we chit chat. Once again, uh, just going over the basic of a fishing attack. Like I said, we usually get um, super, super detail in it. So I was like, oh, let's do something a little, little different. Okay. Oh. So let's see. Uh, cyber ops. All right, from yeah. Mm. Oh, that's cool. He done blew up, man. I think he works for Amazon now. That's cool. Yeah, he seems like a cool mission. I'm so common. Yep, I'll probably do that next mission and two with the uh, V for the fishing for the voice. So, um, so now you, you're right. So I, I probably do a separate one of that. So let's talk about the DR DOS. I just brought that up real quick. Attack involving DR DOS accounts for 39 percent of all denial of service. That was 2014. This is old. I probably should have found someone. Uh, DDoS attacks has been persistent, effective type of DDoS attack for 10 years. DDoS stands for Distributed Reflection Denial of the Service Attack. Techniques involve multiple victim machines as unwitting participants in a DDoS because the victim host machines are redirected and reflected from the victim host to the target. Usually, they also elicit an amplified attack. So that's the, the DR part of that, destructive, Distributed Reflection Attack. So for the Cisco guys and the DR guys, if you do Smurf and all that, once you do that and it does a response, you can make it, what to say, once one response becomes 10 responses. So uh, an enemy is one advantage of the DDoS attack. The target appears to be a, a attack from the victim servers, not the actual attacker. The approach is called spoofing, uh, infecting the request. Uh, what are the internet protocols for DDoS? You can use character generation program. Uh, I, when I see it, I see it as a domain name service attack, DNS, because that's easy to attack. Everybody has one. Network time protocol, a simple network. So when the packet comes in spoof to the victim, it gets reflected. See all those gets reflected to pack, packet two to the uh, primary target. So a malicious attacker is known as making a the actor makes a appear to victim host service the primary target to attack them with the request. The victim host server therefore responds back to the target, which they mistakenly made as the initial request spoof. The reflective denial of service attack is called a script distributed because the involvement of multiple computers, which are same botnet. So they were turning more about the uh uh reflected part of it they didn't do a good job of showing a reflected part of it but that's kind of it at, at at a high level from the ddos attack but a lot of times when you show the victim computers when you take those and you put them inside the network you can make when you get inside the company's network and attacking you can make cisco start doing reflective attacks thinking this is it's making a response back to what a server inside your network so that's when it becomes reflective and then you start you could to make 10 things become a thousand things inside that maybe i need to do a video so i can explain that better but there so i'm going keeping up with the hackers and how do you improve your oh yeah <laughs> uh engineering cannabis question have you seen the area of cyber security growing and keeping up with the hackers and how do you improve your skills in cyber security oh yeah <laughs> we see hacks every day the thing now is we see in nation states, and now when you see uh, Russia, they took Ukraine out. People don't realize they took them out with the cyber before they really rolled in. They shut down their communications. They shut down their network. So it's hard to run an army when you can't conf when you can't communicate, right? They, if you look out there, they were doing those wiper viruses. They were destroying uh, servers in the Ukraine. With it was like four or five of those wiper viruses, right? Um, I, most people know or should have heard 
the uh, United States is a half a million people short in cybersecurity. And I think um, keeping your skills up is number one, live and every day. Shout out to Dewan. Get your certs. And like Engineering Cannabis says, I try to study my craft because I'm single and don't nobody want me. So I try to read a couple hours a night on what's the new attack, how's the new attack. I'm trying to get in the cloud because cloud security is going to be, I ain't going to say the next big thing, but it's going to be up there because all the companies are going to the cloud security, right? And when you're in the cloud, I'm an Amazon guy. It's a shared responsibility. They're responsible for the infrastructure, but uh, if you're doing API coding, you're responsible for it. When you're configuring your VPC, you're responsible for it. You're responsible for controlling traffic. You're responsible for your subnet firewall and you're responsible for your security group which is around the instance right you call them that but to understand it you got to study for that you got to practice i'm studying for a couple aws certs and i'm old <laughs> i don't remember like i used to <laughs> shout out to me i like joking with me yeah no nah, but i don't remember like i used to i'm in my 50s <laughs> i don't memorize like like for real i don't it, i don't memorize like i used to so i gotta keep going yeah shout out to you certs are good and but uh, yeah, we got to stay on the gatekeepers. I got a few of those I'm, I'm trying to talk to and just kind of two is putting out videos, going on panels and let people know certs are a viable way to get in cybersecurity, right? That's definitely a viable way. You should take those candidates serious, right? Best way to evolve is when you say facts. I was married, now I'm single. <laughs> you must disrupt your opposition communication facts facts collide but now it's easier because i can do a denial of service attack i can hit you with the wiper i can hit you with ransomware i don't have to send my army in first i can send in my my cyber security people to take you out right so it's kind of a different battle so there uh, a lot of people are saying this is really the first um cyber battle now their boots on the ground you still gonna have rockets but the first six or eight weeks were strictly cyber Right, hitting it, tell you know, taking this off. So, with the computing come more complex with quantum and AI, IoT, how can we keep up with these securities and can we have more people interested? Um, I think, um, uh, you're 100% right. Hopefully, like you said, I hope, um, cybersecurity with AI, we're gonna have our blue team AI fight their red team AI, right? But you still need people in there to make sure it's working. You need people in there, uh, shout out to Gay Bay, TPT, get their techniques and process and how they're doing it so you know how they attack. If you go to MITRE attack, um, it goes over all the known attacks by Russia, Ukraine, Iran, <laughs> Israel. People have patterns of how they do these attacks, right? So um, you want to learn those so you can put them in your blue team AI, right? And the two is, I, that's, a, I don't know, the last one, engineering cannabis. I've been trying to figure that out for a decade. I was just on a um, shout out to Tech G. Um, I just shot him a thing is I teach in real life for who don't really know. Professor Black, I teach at a local college. Um, black men, black people in my classes, small black men in my classes, infinitesimal, right? So I, I'm trying to figure out how to get more people interested. I'm thinking about doing, um, we talked about, you came up on my panel doing that, uh, artificial eraser race car that's on aws and try to take that to middle school because right it's more like a fortnight you racing you get to do it on a computer so i'm i'm thinking about maybe trying to start that engineering cannabis i do not have the answer for the, that um you i'm gonna I'm stay off of you know we worrying about um plates and dates and all kind of other things engineering cannabis i said i wasn't gonna mention that on my show in 2022 we worrying about the wrong thing engineering cannabis that's all i'm gonna say man that's all i'm gonna say man we worried about the wrong thing engineering cannabis uh, are containers safer than vms professor Ooh. uh yeah don't 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 the thing that makes me pause is I do a lot of security reviews on containers, and if you go if you Google um, uh, CIS checks, which are um, federal checks for containers, most people don't know how to secure a container, Jay. You know, so that that's the only thing that make me pause. Um, and I probably I did I think I did a I did a video of containers. I went through ten checks over hundred checks to lock down a container. Most people think containers come out the box secure, JM. 
That is incorrect. But once again, I do federal work. So, you know, I try to do it at a high level, but from a high level business container, and if you got compliance, HIPAA, FERPA, uh, FISMA for DOD, PUB 1075 RS, most containers I see are, are not hardened at the level they need to be. The side like sim is where a lot of the unknown tech vectors because a lot of companies look at that and say, oh, facts. Facts. We were talking about that because um, I I I did a, a AWS series and one of those was a satellite and I think me and uh, engineering cannabis was talking about that and I think Tab came up, happened to come by that day so yeah we were talking about AWS has a satellite service <laughs> so we were walking that through um, just to kind of talk about it from a, a tabletop perspective is if we were doing this in real life and how would you get the feed and from a, a artificial intelligence from the satellite tam is really shout out to women ladies she's real big on the satellite i just touch it as a vector because i'm trying to get the basic stuff figured out before i get to the satellite but now you are correct because there's a lot of ways to talk i mean i did a video shout out to elon musk he loaned his starlink satellite to um ukraine so they can have internet russia took out their internet and uh uh elon gave him their starlink low uh flying satellites to uh, open up internet for the government in ukraine so shout out to uh, elon musk i'm a black male I'm, i might meet one two black males who are in tech every year uh the, yeah i i agree with that the thing i think we're getting a false uh sense of that um the reason why i said it's a false sense i think youtube and in the internet are cult uh forcing us to get together so i i think it feels like it's more black people in tech and it's really not now it's more black people than i thought but if you look i think we were at six six percent or seven percent um that was in tech even though we 14 percent of the uh, black population so once again let me uh just kind of hit the highlights we went over fishing just uh entry level like i'm doing a I probably do five or six videos to see if it catch on. I, like once again, I get a lot of people asking me novice uh, security questions, which is good because, uh, like I said, me engineering cannabis, gay bay, keep it tech. We start getting into the weeds, and we be people said by the time we were talking Chinese. So I want to do, like I said, a a nice light um, series. Uh, pick a small topic like fishing, drill down to it, and make sure people got the basic concept. Then you know move on to the next one so i probably next thing i probably do is just what's a basic uh virus worm and malware you know all those three are under that you know something smooth so everybody can get that so then we was talking about satellites and reflective and ddos attacks and artificial intelligence and amazon to, to block the attacker people have some basic understanding so they can you know roll with that those type of discussions but two is, you know, I'm always going to have my, we're going to go in deep and talk about it. <laughs> it's not that, man, I told you just when they get hacked and YouTube shut it down. That's true. I did, I, I did a video on YouTube getting, um, people were tech hacking people accounts and deleting them. They were selling them on the dark web for the most money of any type of a, account, which I thought was strange. <laughs> now you're right. <sighs> software defined radio is a good place to start playing with radio on the more expensive that's your crime allow you communicate with satellites now that's true i'm trying to tell that that satellite world calabac <laughs> i'm trying to get my aws basics before i get to the satellite man changing of the landscape with the cyber for the all oh, facts facts um this our tech companies trying to have diversity or they really don't care too much about that i i don't <laughs> that's a tough question i don't I think some companies cared about diversity. They don't really care much about that. I think, JM, if you got skills and you can show that you can help a company, I think that you will get your pay. I think you're, you know, I think you can make it. Now, I'm not, I've been in this game a long time, JM. There are gatekeepers. I'm not minimizing that. There's people that pattern match. They're looking for the Mark Zuckerberg. Um, but there's 500,000 job openings. So medium-sized companies and small companies, I don't think they're trying to gatekeep. They're trying to figure out if you can help them make money. 
Now, if when you go to Google, um, um, those type of companies, I'm not gonna say they're gatekeeping, man. But you know, when they doing those MIT, Harvard, fifty thousand questions, you know that none of them really got anything to do with cybersecurity. They talk about physics and the cybersecurity, you know. But that's what they do. They're a research company, right? So they're gonna move a little different. But once again, I just think there's so many companies seem. Many companies seem to play with diversity. Yeah, because that's the news buzzwords, right, Ty? We we know what the real deal is. So I'm trying to figure out like, how do we get in? How do we get entry-level jobs so we can get in, progress our way and make money, right? Yeah, you're right. I think that's the news buzzwords. Put, people put it on their, their company um, thing. I actually got pissed off because a couple years ago, I joined a small uh consulting cybersecurity consulting firm, especially it next thing i know my pitch is on a pamphlet talking about they like diversity i'm looking at the dude i'm like i told the lady hr y'all got three black people how the hell y'all for diversity do not put my picture on anything without me signing off on because i'm gonna hurt your feelings so so yeah we got to be careful with that time i agree with it i want to do AI in the sector i choose not to but I built a YouTube deal and a blockchain where I found and developed the tech to help people understand what is organic facts. You could uh you could drop that link inside the uh channel if you if you get that going, uh, engineering cannabis. I don't know if you had it up or because I looked at your engineering cannabis, you have much to, if you got a new channel or a new something you want to drop in there, or you or when you get it built, you can always drop it in there, engineering cannabis. I'm cool with that. To get more black males involved, tech, we need to focus on the youth so they can use to spread. I tried Calabac and I'm and I still do. Once again, I teach at a major university. We went to grade school, man. They looked at uh, IT people like we got nerds in pockets, man. Like we supposed to have pocket protectors. Because if you look at all the movies, if you ain't a hacker, you a nerd. If you looked at uh central intelligence with Ice Cube, the Asian dude was a nerd. If you look on a uh, cyber uh, SVU, you got a um, little bow wow in there. He don't even look cool. So I don't, we're not doing a good job of expressing ourselves and figuring out how to do that. Facts, man. I love Westworld, man. I, I love that. I love that series, man. I love that series. Um, so now that that's a that's the thing I think we need to to figure out. Um, I'm in IT. My son, we're we're we're, we're in polar opposites. You know, he more street guy. My grandson said, "IT is not cool." And I'm like, "IT pay for you to stay in this house. You in my rental property." So so I came back. I think we got a lot of things to work on. Man, that's all I'm saying, man. So all I'm saying. I love Westworld, man. I love that series. I'm so I was so upset when they killed it. That was that was so good. The professor, more prior to you, I was told I'm a too professional. My God, did this book. See, I'm right there with you, uh, engineering cat. So that's why I'm saying, I, I, I'm working on it. Like I said, I'm trying to um, start out with junior high. Start off with some uh, PHP programming. Shout out to engineering cannabis. We were looking at the uh, artificial intelligent car with the machine learning to avoid stuff and uh, trying to link that with. Uh, PHP to see if I can make that interesting for a junior high level, but <laughs> let me know, man. I'm about to ask my from the NSA on my channel. <laughs> That's funny you mentioned that. Time. No, they're they're a button up. My boss is a uh, shout out to him, straight Asian, straight by the book, and my freelance sometimes. <laughs> he's so a button up we kind of click we, so we kind of bump heads a little bit so i'm, I'm actually gonna have an nsa guy uh, coming up probably uh next month uh Ty, you can ask him some questions yeah he worked uh probably eight years ago he was at the nsa a lot of people generally don't have access to folks in tech that's what it has been shaped by all oh, facts you 100 you 100 correct um because um i remember when i started because i'm 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 dubbing myself the oldest person in i started my first internship in 1988 doing mainframes and it was um i think it was 500 people in it i think there was only six black people so i mean 
you just like you said, you just don't see it as much. So that's cool, man. He liked it. That's cool, man. So that's gonna be great for him. Sign my son up for coding summer camp. You and a few others relate to him. I appreciate that, man. That's a good move, man. Because uh coding's the way to go, man. Then two is coding. For me, coding was the foundation that got me into cybersecurity, right? Because most websites, you got to code in and connect to the back end, do the job. That's the first thing hackers attack. <laughs> if, if they can't fish you, the first thing they're going to attack is your website because it's open to the public, right? When you scan it, that's the first port it's going to see, right? So, mm. and it's called actually Purple Team from a security perspective. And I would, I would think if I don't believe in everything we espouse in the U.S., they mean, no, nah, I don't think they will reject you. Uh, some of that stuff you can just keep to yourself. <laughs> but no, I don't think they will reject you. Um, I think they're looking for a certain skill set. And the, the thing, too, is they look for, um, and the DOD does, is um, 60% of the guys got ex-military experience. So when you're in the military, it's gonna uh, you're going to think a certain way and move a certain way. I was learning. I was learning how to ride a bike when you were when you were <laughs> thirty. Yeah, cause I'll be fifty three this year, man. I actually started programming in, programming actually in high school my junior year, which would have been actually eighty four. So um, my first intern, I <laughs> I showed a mainframe on my site, and it it had tape drives because there was no space really on a mainframe. You actually had to write your data on tape. A lot of my people never seen a tape drive. So we were looking at so that was interesting to me. One guy called me the Moses of computers. I think I like that. <laughs> I'm the Moses. <laughs> I'm Moses of computers. So now, nah, so yeah, I've been in the game a long time. Is IT part of curriculum in high school? Uh, the only part of I think that's in curriculum is most um, schools teach the uh, the Microsoft Office. So you get a little access, a little PowerPoint, a uh, little Excel. A lot of people use Excel. Like you, you should be using a database. So um, I had curriculum in high school. It was a uh, advanced uh, AP for college. So it wasn't really it was it wasn't really open up to everything in school. Now I'm 53. I'm close. You close? To, I'm 53. I'll be 54 this year. <laughs> I'm close to 57. I'm 53 going on 54. I think I could tell you time flies, man. <laughs> Real time. So uh, with high guy prices, high prices, high evictions, and also face, I would think people would be running. Where the opportunities are but i was told it was too complicated yeah that's true man people um i ain't gonna say a lot of people a certain part of the segment thinks money is you gonna make six figures easy in a week right you gotta grind you gotta go get it and it takes you skills on top of skills and some of it's hard i just believe that um i tease so vast that you can find a place or domain in there that fits if you're not a programmer you're a network admin if you're not a network admin you could be a database admin shout out to keep it techie you could be a linux admin uh, once you get some skills you can go up to machine learning i i really enjoy programming um that's the first thing i do very well it's the thing i'm really most comfortable with i just make more money doing cybersecurity. um but yeah there's just so many things even from the help desk you know, you go to help desk, then you graduate. Um, somebody put in there, oh, that was on tech. PMP, project managers. Most programmers and technology people cannot communicate to customers. So that you project management, their job is just to do the chart and communicate with the customers to get the requirements right. Because I know some brilliant people on the spectrum. So there's just so many different domains in here, engineering cannabis. You think you could find one. And get happy and i'm gonna do more grc governance risk and compliance that's really mostly paperwork i'm trying i'm scanning a machine to, to figure out its vulnerabilities and i write that up right then i figure out the risk of all these vulnerabilities that you haven't closed right governance risk and compliance right that's a different domain in cybersecurity. once again there's just so many domains in there you think you could find some and be comfortable with I appreciate that, Calabac. Cal. I keep calling you Calabac after the Superman character. I'm sorry, <laughs> Caleb. I am so tired. I got to get it together, man. I'm trying to give up caffeine and I've been walking. I'm out of shape. This pandemic got me, man. This is statistic is different. It's difficult. Facts, facts, facts. So, yeah, I did that in um, graduate school. 
basic stats. Uh, we were doing SAS and SPSF, uh, just looking at things from a company perspective to figure out what you should do to uh, make your profits higher. So I keep debating if I'm gonna go to <laughs> machine learning. Uh, but, shout, but shout out to um, to chat. Uh, once again, this is novice security. We uh, went through phishing at a very basic level. Um, that's what I'm going to do. When you see novice, you know it's going to be super novice. Uh, you can join if you want, or you can pick up the replay. Like I said, uh, probably 10% of my audience are, are novice security people. I was on panels and they liked me. So uh, I just want to bring them up from novices to, to understanding security. Um, things that regular people get attacked through your phishing, through your ring doorbell, you know, through your phone, Zelle, Cash App, and PayPal get hacked every other week. So just talk about um, everyday cybersecurity for everyday people. And of course, you know, I'm teaching um, intro intro to forensics, 3 p.m. 3 PM every Sunday. I taught that in a regular university. So I uh, cleaned up those slides. I'm teaching just kind of a lecture class um to get people comfortable with that so um so we're definitely gonna be digging in on sunday at three um to catch the replay two is i try to do uh two videos of just what's happening in uh regular security i did one uh the other day where they um the united states gonna kick kick kaspersky's uh security tools out of the government because they're a russian company right but we knew that was coming so now, so uh, I appreciate that. Um, two is I came here to help people. I got 30 years and um, people got um, basic security questions from me. And I'm teaching more uh, compliance and cybersecurity and from a company standpoint, how would that work and how you would uh, move and uh, make those type of moves. So Once again, I think that's all I got. I'm going to wait a few minutes if y'all had any more questions. Once again, I'm teaching intro to forensics on uh, Sunday at 3. Um, I need to go ahead and create a playlist because I think uh, I got one class in there already. I did last week, so I'm going to create a forensics playlist. So you can check it out. And uh, once again, just another domain in the cybersecurity uh, umbrella of uh, forensics. What happens when you get hacked? What do they hack? How do they hack you? Uh, how much information they steal and where did they steal it to? And if you got their IP address, it's called chain of custody. Maybe you can prosecute them and get them put into jail for cybersecurity. Let me check my email. I will check time behind on my email. I, I, um, at my work, we were getting, um, audited by the IR, the IRS <laughs> for the last three weeks. So, so I've been really behind and I've been working at night and I've just been tired. So my bad. I will check my email right after this. I haven't looked at my email probably in two weeks. Like I said, we've been having a, an IRS audit. And I'm going to uh, talk about what it's like to actually go through a federal IRS audit and what's the 10 big uh, areas they looked at for us and what is the cap, uh, uh, policies, DR, COOP, uh, configuration management, uh, incident response, uh, policies, uh, how you lock down GPOs from a rep federal system. Uh, what does that look like when you scan those systems, when you lock them down? First computer I had was an IBM 8080. Oh, it was eight, yeah, 80. No, it was 8088. That was the first one I had. Let me see if I can look that up. Make sure I, I might be messing those numbers up. I think it was 88 yeah there it is 8088 i show a picture of it so where's a picture of it at? and uh we actually had these at not at my house i had to go to school and use these because my my family didn't have money like that so uh this is the first one i had with the five and a quarter floppy disk i was putting in work i was programming q basic <laughs> I was programming cute basic on it. Then when I went to college, I was doing a similar where we were actually programming it, programming it on the on the chip. <laughs> so that's the first computer I actually worked on, which was in college. Um, oh, let me uh, let me take that back. That's the first PC I worked on, and I worked on a Vax, Vax IBM lookalike Vax. 
think it was a Vax 750. Yeah, that was there. Yep, that's it right there. This is the first computer I ever did. It was a mini computer. We did those ADL, but the first job I worked on, this is what I worked on. It was a Vax <laughs> 750. This is a mini computer. It's like an IBM uh, baby mainframe because they were cheaper. That's the first thing I worked on at uh, third party claims administrator doing medical claims. Wow, I was working on something called, uh, there was another thing on there called uh, Quick Basic. Ran on a Vax too, but that was the first thing I worked on in business. So I was, <sighs> that PC was probably my freshman year in college, which will be. 1987 was this working on those then we had my junior year we were actually working on the vax by probably 88 then when my first job i was programming one of these <laughs> facts 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 man he's like, oh man that's the vax 750 man <laughs> shout out to the vax they couldn't afford the IBM. It was the knockoff for the IBM. Yeah, man. And they very didn't, hey, they didn't have much disk space and much power either, man. They were slow as dirt compared to what you got in your pocket. But yeah, so I, I always joke and tell people I got out the digital mud, man. That's what I start programming on. Man, look at that. You didn't even have a color screen, man. That that screen weighed about 50 pounds, man. You hurt your back trying to lift the screen up. Yeah, man. That's what I'm from. I, but I, that's why I joke, man. I, I got out the digital mud, man. I, I was talking to one of my colleagues. I interviewed him. Um, he's 10 years older than me. We were joking. What I seen when I started till now, it's going to be interesting. From 2022, then another 20 years, you know, I'll be 70 ish. You know, what, what are we going to be? We probably be programming on glass. Like, shout out to engineering cannabis. We're going to be doing quantum computing it's gonna look like a usb drive you know <laughs> so mm. let's see you mm. is it true most industrial systems are still using nsc though yeah that's true i'm gonna leave that to uh struggle security struggle security with gabe because he does a lot more industrial systems and yes we we believe those all because i did an interview five years ago for a um electric company they were talking about the smart grid what they were running in the back office to keep the, to switch over the smart grid man that technology was old man so yeah a lot of it so you get to let that facts so yeah they're using old technology they're trying to upgrade jam and the cool thing is and i'm gonna talk about it the uh budget they just did had a crazy amount in there for cybersecurity, and part of the cyber security was for infrastructure for the nuclear plants uh water uh, electric, all of that had a big dollar amount in the bill that just came out. I was I was reading through it. I probably go through and slice some of it up and talk about it. But yeah, they're giving a ton of money to uh, uh, the states to get that that infrastructure upgraded. Because too, because people don't realize Colonial Pipeline that's a private company, but it supplies all the gas. So once it got hacked, people were putting gas in trash bags. I, I never forget. Well, I seen that one person put gas in trash bag. So now the United States is trying to figure out, okay, even though these are private companies, we got to make sure they're secure. So they're going to start sending out a Department of Homeland Security to check these companies for their uh, cybersecurity. We call it dossier, cybersecurity infrastructure, to see where they're at, to see if they're vulnerable, right? So part of them getting that gas money and doing that money, they're going to start um putting uh, cybersecurity requirements on them. Because if you look at Colonial Pipeline, they actually put TSA, which I thought was weird. They put TSA over Colonial Pipeline, which I thought, but I think because it's transportation and gas is part of transportation. I think that's a bad assignment, but that's what they did. So so once again, if you're coming in, check the replay. We talked about um, introduction to phishing. Then at the end, you know, I always take cybersecurity questions and if you want to shoot me some if even though I'm, I'm vastly behind in my email professor black ops at, at gmail.com i one word i'm gonna do a better job at um getting caught up on my email i've been uh 
my contract's up in a couple months too. So I've been uh, interviewing, reaching out to people, and people have been reaching out to me. So I'm trying to make sure I get a solid place to land. Um, so then two is I'm hopefully in 2023, I'm going to have me about three AWS certs and I'm going to go do some cloud work in 2023. So that's kind of what I'm kind of lining myself up for. Um, so that's all I got, man. I just want to touch on uh, novice security. Like I said, when you see novice, just know it's going to be um, some basic stuff we're going over just to get everybody level set. Once again, the high end stuff, we're going to do a Sunday 3 p.m. introduction to um, for my class. You check it out. Like I said, I got um, one I did last week. Uh, intro to digital forensics. I taught that for four or five years. Um, at the basic level, something happens. What do you do? How do you set up an office? How do you set up policies so people know what to do? So they know you can do forensics on them, right? There's always a legal portion of uh, cybersecurity is in there. That's all I got today. I, um, I thanks everybody for joining me. I just put it up today, something super quick. Um, I'm sure I'm going to see y'all in cybersecurity streets. Check me out Sunday at uh, 3 p.m. or check out the replay. Check out my man, Engineering Cannabis. Check out um, Keep It Tech. He was in the house. You know, everybody check everybody out, man. Let's just grow the community. And uh, the people want to get it, we're going to make sure they, they're good. And, you know, they can uh, shout out to Ty. Get past the gatekeeper so they can make this bag, man. I'm out. Everybody have a happy Friday. I'm calling it already. <laughs> everybody have a fr happy Friday. I'm calling it Friday already. I'm shutting it down for the day. Everybody have a good day. Uh, reach out if you need something.